Hi, I'm Jessica. And I'm Kira. And we are the, the Keepers, Keepers of, of the books. books, your online librarians. And we have our weekly reads for you. The Hidden Oracle by Rick Riordan. This follows the story of Apollo, who has been cast down from Olympus by Zeus, and now he is a mortal teenager known as Lester Papadopoulos. The oracles have quit getting prophecies, and now he has to figure out how to save Camp Half-Blood and all the other demigods from an ancient force that is very, very evil that dates back as far as ancient Rome. To make matters worse, he's also forced to be the servant to a demigod named Meg, who is very arrogant, obstinate, and drives him absolutely crazy. Definitely a very funny book, fast-paced adventure. It's kind of fun to see it through the god's point of view. It does slightly take off where the last book in the Heroes of Olympus did finish, but you can read this without having finished the other series as well. This is the review book from Disney Hyperion. Grades five to nine or ages 10 to 15. So my first thing to review is not actually a book, but it is called The Coloring Notebook. You may have seen it on Amazon. It runs for about $20. And this is a review copy from The Coloring Notebook. It's similar to a moleskin type finish. It's a, it's a paper. It's not a leather or plastic, but it's a high quality paper. It has coloring pages for adults. It comes in three styles. This one has dots. And it also comes in both blank and in lined. It has a rubber band to keep it closed and a ribbon bookmark. Inside of the back, this is also a neat feature, is it has this pocket. So you can keep some other things in there, some notes or three by five cards or whatever. This may not matter to everybody, but it is a standardized size, which is ISO standard 216 or an A5 size paper. And that is 148 by 210 millimeters. That's roughly 5.8 inches and about 8.3. This has 176 pages and approximately half of it is actually coloring pages for adults. And half of it is going to be your dotted paper. I've actually been looking for a notebook like this to take notes in meetings so that I can kind of like doodle or color while I'm taking my notes and paying attention. And I pay better attention when I'm kind of doing something mindless at the same time. It has some really cute coloring pages. The paper in it is very soft and very smooth. It's slightly a cream color. Now there are a few pages where it's all dots. This is a really great notebook. If I was doing a bullet journal, I think this would be great. It's acid free and I could take my, my notes or put my things I'm keeping track of on one side and my coloring could be on the other side. I did want to try out some different inks on the paper because I noticed sometimes I could kind of see the dots and the paper when I saw it in the light. So I wanted to try some different pens. So you guys, if you were looking for something that'd work with some different pens, you would know what kind worked better. This is definitely gonna work with like your ballpoint pen. But I liked the gel pens. They didn't really bleed through to the other side too much. You could still see a faint shadow with some darker colors. It didn't bleed through and get on the other side of the paper. It did smear a little bit, so you do have to let it dry. I tried some other ones. I tried a coloring marker. This one's a brush tip. And it did kind of muck up the paper a little bit, so it wasn't really so smooth anymore. You know how sometimes marker can feel like it's dissolved with the paper kind of a little? That did bleed through and it did get through my paper onto the other paper. So I wouldn't really be able to use this page for notes if I did that. Then I tried the Tri Plus fine liners, but my inks looked a slightly different color on this type of paper. My purple came out almost black, like deep, deep, deep purple. And it did get through, not only could you see it on the back of that paper, it did get on this paper. I tried a Sharpie, cause this isn't a Sharpie pen, it's just a Sharpie. Cause I know a lot of people who color with Sharpies. Yeah, it just, it bled through the worst, of course. And then I tried, Color. oh, well, this is just a different kind of gel pen. I tried this gel pen too. And you could see it, the image on the other side a little bit with this gel pen. The last thing I tried was just a Crayola twistable colored pencil because I couldn't find my really good colored pencils. This actually worked the best for coloring on this paper. It was smooth, it didn't smear, and it didn't bleed through at all, and you can't really see the shadow on the other side. And the color stayed the same, so a colored pencil is actually probably your best bet for coloring, and even just a ballpoint pen or test a gel pen for writing on it. There's probably some different inks that are gonna work better than others on this paper because some of the inks did bleed through. And you may wanna be aware of that and test it on like a page but other than that it's nice it's high quality it does kind of remind me a little bit of moleskin so that's 
The Coloring Notebook. Truth Witch by Susan Denard. I've read other books by this author and really liked them, and this one was no different. Sophia is the main character, and she is a truth witch, but also essentially the royalty of this world. She's called Domna, and she's supposed to be marrying the Emperor of Katora. And what happens is very interesting, because when she's at this ball where she's supposed to announce her engagement to the Emperor, she runs away first because she doesn't want to marry the Emperor. And she ends up getting kidnapped by a guy named Merrick from New Brevna. He's the prince of it. And he was actually hired by her uncle to get her to safety. Fast forward a little bit, they're on the seas. Now the Empress of Kartora is after her and wanting to kill her. And the Emperor is hot on her heels as well with other unknown nefarious purposes. Can she get to safety? Why are all these people trying to kill her? Very action-packed fantasy with a lot of world building. I loved all the magical elements and all the different powers that are involved. One of the villains, there's more than one, is actually a blood witch, so he can like control people's blood. Merrick is a wind witch, he can control people's airways as well. There's, there's just a few of them. I think if you like anything that has magical powers, you'll also like this too. Due to some language and some violence, ages 12 and up or grades 7 to 12. You want to stay tuned because we have some great reviews coming for you. The sequel to that one, Scythe. Six of Crows and Wayfarer and more. If you're liking this video so far, feel free to like, comment, or subscribe. Remember, subscribing is free. You just get some reminders once in a while to let you know when new videos come out. Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. This one, I know this one came out a while ago, but I wanted to read it and I know the sequel's already out, but I had to wait till it was checked in, which pretty much took over a year. This book is basically magic meets Ocean's Eleven or The Italian Job or any of those type of heist movies where you don't really know all the details and you're like watching and watching and trying to figure it out. And at the end you're going, oh, I get it. Then you kind of want to start over again. But in this one, you really want to read the next book. You're on the edge of your seat. Of course, that keeps you reading. You have Kaz Brecker. He is the leader of this gang and he lives in Ketterdam. He has the opportunity to have a major heist put together. There is this new drug that is taking the magic people and it makes them junkies, but it makes them super powerful. Kaz has this backstory and he's out for revenge and he thinks this heist would help him to get revenge. He has to put together a team. So he gets five other shady criminals, thieves, a lot of his crew has powers. You learn more about their powers in the book, and I'm not gonna tell you all their powers because it's gonna spoil part of the story. They have some really shady paths and their backstories are filled in throughout. They're kind of spliced in at opportune moments to put a backstory. And they really help you to understand the characters and why so many of these characters on this team, even though it's the best team, lots of them hate each other or don't trust each other and have some really interesting paths. But their heist is for the ice court. The ice court is basically another kingdom or city. Nobody's ever survived robbing them, having a siege, anything like that. Security is super high and nobody really knows enough to get around it. But there's somebody on this team who knows a little bit more. Obviously, like a heist movie, you can't really tell you too much more without giving you that. Just know that this is really good and Lee Bardugo has deserved all the praise she has gotten for her books. When she's an amazing writer and it's a great story, it does have some language and some violence and again, there is that drug. It's not a real drug. The language is pretty mild. There's one F word that I remember. A few other swear words mixed in. Because of that, I'm gonna say grades seven and up or ages 12 and up. Even adults would like this one. So junior high, high school, and adult. Win Witch by Susan Denard. This is the sequel to the one we mentioned before. And I promise I'll avoid the spoilers. Wait, will you spoil the first book? Nope. But you'll remember Sophia and Merrick we mentioned and the other characters from the previous review a few minutes ago. Well, something happens. They all get separated. And now Sophia is a prisoner on the Empress of Katora's boat. Merrick has gone back to Nebrevna because somebody is trying to assassinate him. Basically, all their paths are going to intertwine and come back together because they still have to save the world and stop whatever the ancient evil is from the first book. This is an action-packed fantasy filled with adventure and you'll love having all the stories come back together and really bring to life this world even more. I definitely would recommend one and two. Great for ages 12 and up 
or 7 to 12. This one was a review book from Tortine. The Secret Files of Faraday Morrow. This one is written by Jessica Haight and Stephanie Robinson and illustrated by Roman Murdov. Faraday, yes, Faraday is her name. She's 11 and her family is moving from Manhattan to a little town called Ashpot, Connecticut. And they are moving into a house known as the Begonia House. Everybody knows the history of Begonia House. There's a reason it hasn't sold. It's a mansion basically and her family is making a bed and breakfast out of it. They want to remodel it and live there. Faraday has left her best friend Lizzie back in Manhattan. Lizzie's going to visit Faraday twice a month. And Faraday is making a new friend named Marcus. Faraday and Lizzie are in charge of the detective mystery squad and they make a new friend here, Marcus, like we've mentioned, and Marcus is gonna join their mystery squad as well. The Begonia house has an interesting past to it. Let's just say there's newspaper stories, there's rumors. First day Faraday moves in, she hears bagpipes coming from behind a padlock door. Her dad finds a key, opens the padlock. There's bagpipes, they're dusty, and there's nobody there. In addition, there's a really strange mirror covered by a sheet and she thinks she sees strange things happening. One day she's up in that attic sorting through things and her little sister like crawls into the mirror and comes out with a red glittery shoe. Oh. There's more. There's a key. There's like a whomping willow tree. It's not called a whomping willow tree but you get the idea. And there's a strange lady with red hair like an old lady with reddish hair. It's a very fun mystery with a lot of elements and a little bit of magic thrown in. So if you liked the map to everywhere, you will like this book. If you liked Flores by Patrick Carmen, this is a review copy from Delacorte and Kiss the Book. Grades four through seven or ages nine through 13, just depending on reading level. Everyone We've Been by Sarah Everett. This is about Addison Sullivan. She gets in a bad bus accident and somehow manages to come out fairly unscathed, except she keeps seeing a boy that no one else can see. To top things off, she goes to this clinic called Overton that's supposed to be for brain research and finds out she's been there before. What is what goes through her mind? How on earth could that possibly be? She doesn't remember being there. Why was she at Overton Clinic? Who is this boy she keeps seeing? And is she truly losing her mind? This has some supernatural fun elements as well as uh, mostly realistic fiction. If you like mystery, you'll definitely like this book. It does have a fair amount of language, including some F words, but it doesn't really detract that much from the book. I would recommend this however for grades eight and up or ages 13 and up. This is a review book from Alfred A. Knopf and Kiss the Book. Wayfarer, I read the first book and I reviewed that a couple weeks ago. You'll find that in one of our other weekly reads. The books are always listed in the description and we'll put a link to which one it is. It is absolutely impossible to review this book without spoiling elements of the first book. So fast forward to Kira's next book if you don't want to be spoiled. This one starts and has interspersed with it more pieces of Rose's backstory and why she never trained Etta all the way to be a traveler. So Etta and Nicholas, when they get to the astrolabe in the last book, Etta disappears and they are separated and the astrolabe disappears and it's taken by thorns or so they believe. Etta disappears, but she just somehow ends up the thorns and Henry Hemlock is their leader and he says that he's Etta's father and he has more information for her about the other side of the story. Nicholas is heartbroken because Etta has completely disappeared and he wants to save her. So he teams up with Sophia. As unlikely as that sounds, they team up. So you have the story going back and forth between Etta and her father and Sophia and Nicholas. And then you have the backstories put in like a rose and stuff. And you also have a much deadlier power. I don't know how else to describe that, a dark, dark power. Could this be what Rose was really scared of and why she ran into hiding? Ironwood is still after the astrolabe as well. And you start really wondering who has true intentions in this book and who's are dubious and who's really trying to alter timelines and history and who's trying to keep things the way they're supposed to be in history and who's trying to make a better future for themselves and only themselves and everybody else and it's complicated <laughs> but it is so good and it's such a good book it is not one that you can read quickly you do need to read the details and take your time in this book of course i love alexander bracken the sequel to passenger and also the conclusion wayfair is book two in this duet so that's the end grade seven and up or ages 12 and up so junior high high school or adult 
Science by Neil Schusterman, or Schusterman, depending on how you decide to pronounce it. This book is an intense read, I'll warn you now. It follows the story of Citra and Rowan, they have been selected to be apprenticed to Scythe Faraday. This is a world where nobody dies, but they have these Scythe men who go around and glean people. So basically, they choose how they want to kill people and are paid to do it. That's their whole job. Unfortunately, there are four Scythe men, the leaders in this Scythe Council, and they are very corrupt. They're Goddard, Volta, Chomsky, and Rand. They have an unknown number of followers that are following them, and they are going around mask leaning people, which is a major, major no-no, because they have like these commandments they're supposed to follow, and it's major breach of that. Unfortunately, since they're the leaders, they are trying to take over the world, and they pretty much can do whatever they want, because Scythe are above the law in this world. So it's up to Citra and Rowan to figure out how to stop these four corrupt scythemen, along with their mentor, master, trainer, whatever you want to call him, Scythe Faraday. The three of them have to save the world from their own kind. Will they succeed? To make matters worse, when they finish training, they will have to fight each other, and whoever wins the battle will have to glean the other one. This was a very action-packed, intense book, and I just love how the characters develop and how you get a feel to really step into the heads of the other scythe men. If you like Neil Shusterman's other books, you'll probably like this one, but Warning is like completely different from anything else he's ever written, but I loved it. Because of the nature of the callousness of the murders, okay, we'll call them gleanings. I would definitely say this is for grades eight and up or ages 13 and up. There is some language as well. Thank you to those who provide us with some review books this time. We do want to let you know that we have some fantastic stuff coming up. We spent yesterday at Wizarding Days and mm -hmm. we got to interview some authors. So you'll have our Harry Potter read-alikes as well as some author interviews and other things from Wizarding Days. They'll be posting regularly throughout the next two or three weeks because there's going to be a whole bunch of short ones. Soon, in just a few months, Sync YA will be starting again, so don't forget about that come April when they start. For those of you who don't know, Sync YA is two free audiobooks every week, and the information on that will be in the description, as well as more information on all of these books, such as ISBN numbers. And just so you know, Sync YA is not giving us any compensation for saying that. We just love Sync YA. <laughs> well, of course, it's two free audiobooks for everybody every week. I know, how all can summer. you resist that? All what a summer. great way for teens to keep reading. We're obsessed with audiobooks. <laughs> we like Sinkway. We have for years. That is it for our weekly reads. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and you will hear about future updates for more books. And if you have any questions for the librarians, please put those in the comments below. Until next time, happy reading. Bye. Bye.